that's why the divorce rate is like 70% in reality. And then think about it. A lot of people don't get married. They just live together, and then they fight and break up. So it's probably more like 90 or 100%. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty high, for sure. Yep. That's because women are too controlling, and men are assholes, so you can't win. Hey, speak for yourself on that deal. Well, wait, you know, when, we want, when you go into a marriage, what are you looking for? You don't want your wife to change, but your wife wants you to change, okay? This is what's weird about marriages, okay? You go into a marriage, it's like, I don't want her to change. I want her to be just like she is. But her whole plan in her mind is, I'm going to change him. And your whole plan is, I, I want her to stay like she is. Well, that's the uh, dance of the relationship, you know. And they both radically change, trust me. Well, we all change, but uh, but the men go into the relationship with, I like her as she is, because why? Well, shit, she's doing, she's doing the uh, women thing, which is I'll do whatever it takes to make sure I nail him. And the guy's doing the guy thing of, uh, I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah, because she's so controlling, she he gets somebody else on the side because he, once she got him, he, she didn't know how to keep him and, or treat him right. If you ever want to know what a woman's going to be like when she gets older, just look at her mother. I, you know, I wish I could say that that's the case because I've looked at uh, some of the mothers and I've seen very, you know, a lot of beauty in them in terms of what kind of a person they are. And their daughters are like... Where in the hell did you come from? <laughs> well, I can't help it if you have bad luck. You want to be happy? Marry a girl from the Philippines or Indonesia. Or from a different planet. That's from the Art Bell playbook. Uh, there might be a lot said to that, because quite honestly, American women are about the most spoiled on Earth. Well, no, not only that, they're lazy, they don't know how to sew, they don't know how to cook anymore. They don't know how to do a damn thing except talk on their cell phone and drive around in a new car that you're paying for. I got a friend of mine, he's married to a girl from the Philippines, 20 years younger than him, and she adores the ground he walks on. And, you know, I asked her one day, and she says, I'm not interested in how he looks, I'm interested in how he treats me. And there's a lot to be said for that. Now, these Asian women, they think about family first, not themselves. I say the most worthless uh, breed of women came from America. Well, uh, to what Alex just said, there are American girls that are that way. They really, there are. My wife's that way. It's family first. Even if I, even if I grow big warts, it's family first. And how do I treat her? Oh, uh, you can't get any more. I, no, I shouldn't say it that way, but uh, she's extremely religious, and uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Hey, Alex, what radio are you on? I'm running a Kenwood TS-572. Uh, it sounds like it's slightly off frequency. Really? Yeah, slightly. Actually, uh, Theo, you're not going to like this. Yeah? You sound like you're a hair off, and, and uh, Alex sounds like he's a hair on. The plot thickens. Well, somebody's radio's on. It's not mine. I got a frequency counter right here. I heard people have 5, 7, and they typical, I think. Their audio sounds a little bit. I don't know. I, I, Alex sounded good. I didn't hear uh, strange harmonics, you know, because your ear can pick that up very quickly uh, with the strange harmonics if you're even off 10 or 20 hertz. Well, it could be, too, that Alex is real tired and he's slumping down a little. You know what I'm saying? He could be doing it to himself. Everybody sounds good up this way. Okay, who do we have in here? It's Jim Casey 9 vkv I thought that was you. I just, I don't want to presuppose because, honestly, my ears sometimes work and sometimes don't. There's a wise man that doesn't assume because we all know what happens when you assume. Is, um, is well, no, actually, I turned into my ex. Jim? <laughs> what? Is, is the other gentleman familiar with uh, the 95 group, which is now on 91? Uh, no, huh? He don't, you know, he doesn't, he does not need to be familiar with them. I, I would just basically leave him out of this. Okay, NAT issue. 
I, I've heard the uh, rumors and I've uh, uh, copied the mail enough to know that you, Jim's right. I don't want to know about it. Well, I mean, we can't help it, though, when we, we get jammed here from them. They cure him down here a lot. Roger, roger. Well, you know, uh, if they're within uh, 2KC of where, you know, somebody else is, then they're going to get as much blow-by as, uh, you know, as you do. No, no, I mean, they come down here specifically with one intent, and that is to, uh, to throw music, uh, noises, and other things like that to cure Emma. Record, playback, stuff, you know. Oh, Lord's uh, Shades of 7200. Yes, as if they, uh, they've basically been uh, part of that whole thing, but uh, that's why it's like, yeah, I, anyway, no, we, you don't need, it, it's, it's, it's just a bad situation, and it is what it is. Hey, um, did Captain Dave get the flu? I haven't heard him for a month or weeks. Captain Dave? Yeah, I haven't heard him for a while. I, last time I heard him, he was uh, singing New York, New York, um... Well, uh, what would that have been? Uh, what day? What? It was a holiday. Oh, New Year's. Oh, no. He's been on way since then. Uh, I would have loved to have heard that. When, when did you hear him last, Jim? Uh, it's been a while since I did. I've got him on my uh, QSO vlog doing uh, New York, New York. If you go to uh, YouTube and do a call out a search, Kilo Charlie 9 Victor, Kilo Victor. Uh, and uh, right at the top of the page there on the QSO vlogs, uh, he uh, there's a thing called uh, List, which has about 130 uh, uh, segments in it. And I forget where he well he would be um, towards uh, uh, New Year's. You know, if you go down by the uh, by the published dates, uh, he would be right around New Year's. Yeah, I don't care about that. I just haven't heard him for the last two or three weeks. Um, maybe he got blue. Well, he's hanging around 43. I was going to say, you know what, Theo, uh, about the same amount of time. It's been the past two weeks, three weeks, uh, I heard him, uh, which is recent. Uh, it's possible, because uh, that, you know, what? You, I think we all have seen what the flu is doing to people, W3JMD. I'll be right back. He could have gotten a bad bottle of Muscatel. Or he got a letter from the FCC. Well, that wouldn't stop him. <laughs> I know, but it, it can slow you down. Well, uh... I don't know, because quite honestly, I, I think Dave is necessary. You know, everybody can argue that whatever which way they want. Dave actually draws a lot of hams to that frequency to listen, and uh, where they might be doing something else. And Dave is a unique individual. I, I, I don't have a problem with his presence. I know a lot of hams may, but I don't. I, it's like, fine, he's got his own frequency, he does what he does. Uh, you know, it's... He's skirting, he's skirting the borders of things. You know, the FCC may need to put some more definition in whatever. But uh, uh, I find Dave quite humorous at times when I go listen. W3JMD. KC9 VKV. Yeah, I think uh, I think by law the uh, Coast Guard would have to uh, serve him uh, if he's out on the uh, on his trusty boat there. I, don't th I think he's on land. Jimmy Nay. No, he is because. He got people calling him on his phone. He's got a call-in line on his radio show. He's in jurisdiction of, uh, of, uh, of the United States, even if you're in space. I think it's up 50 miles, you know, like an airplane. <laughs> Do something in an airplane on a, on a ham radio, it ain't the FAA. It's the, if you're in the jurisdiction of the FCC, FCC handles it. Five miles off. Oh, oh here we are. Water, though. Hundred miles. You know that that blows me away. Does every country have a hundred miles? Jimmy May. It doesn't matter anyway. Somebody Jimmy May. No, I, I was just talking from the standpoint of uh, transportation to the uh, situation. Uh, you know, uh, other than not that uh, the FCC wouldn't have jurisdiction, but uh, the FCC doesn't go anywhere without uh, usually um, support of. Uh, you know, other uh, law enforcement agencies. Jim, it doesn't matter because uh, remember the, the, sh the ship Sarah 
with Alan Weiner and his uh, the bootleggers out there, they went way beyond the hundred mile thing in the, at the Coast Guard. And the Navy just took all their shit and threw it overboard. It didn't matter where the hell they were at; they were after them. Okay, uh, somebody said Jimmy May. Go ahead. I did. What's it to you? It's who? What? You don't hear me? I hear you, but I sometimes with static or something, I take you out. Jesus Christ! Well, then forget it. Who is it? He's so weak. Um, I'm thinking it might be Snoger, but I'm not sure. It's somebody that's uh, thinking that they're getting to us like we're getting to them, signal-wise, and they're barefoot. I'm not barefoot. Jesus Christ, Jimmy May. He's not barefoot. No, that's Snoger. I know, okay, I recognize the voice. Uh, I recognize the voice. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, okay, obviously you're not hearing me, so I won't belabor the fact. You came up uh, quite a bit that time. Uh, you were really down. Uh, I think conditions probably took you down, but you were up uh, substantially that last transmission. Okay, Jimmy May, apparently everybody's going to talk but you. See you later, BA3ZW quiz. I need to find out. I, I heard him. I heard him. I didn't hear him initially, and everybody started doubling, so I, okay. Jim, if you want, if you want to tell me, I'm, I'm listening now. Uh, it hurt a ceiling. I, I apologize because I like Jim. You know, I actually sent three or three, three certificates up to him. First one uh, was the wrong address, and that was that was understandable because he had moved, so it got sent back. Second one. I totally screwed up his call sign. And I know why I did that, uh, but it's still my fault. Okay, so it didn't get to him. And seven years later, he got the third certificate, and it finally did get to him, and he got it. What kind of certificates was that? It was Knights of the Round Table on 3860. Seven years later? Seven years later. No wonder he's pissed off. Seven years, my God. The guy's out in the sack. We'll catch you tomorrow. WTKTT. Good night, Tom. Take care. W3JMD. Yeah, good night, Tom. Now, yeah, he's back. Casey, 9 VKV. Well, no, I can, I can explain why. There is an explanation. It's not a good one, but it is an explanation. Hey, Jim. Yep. Before you sign out, let me sign out. Uh, it would be explained. I'm going to sign out. 73s, everybody. i got to get out of here and change some bandages. So uh, uh, this just never ends. Uh, take care. NACSU. Good night, TS. 73, W3JMD. Now, now, is, is there anyone else? Oh, wait, wait a minute. Somebody. Duh. Everybody, please say 73 to CO. Good night, CO. 73, Good night, CO. Threes. Thank you. I appreciate everybody. Elvis is not leaving the building. Okay, here's what happened. I sent the original one to Jim, and after several months, and it, it literally took that while, that long, I got it back, and it was like undeliverable because he wasn't there. Uh, okay, uh, no idea where to send it. Uh, anyway, in the meantime, I had a hard drive crash. And what does that mean? Well, it means I lost the data. I couldn't even print one out. Seven years later, or six years later, six or seven years later, I found that I had stored it on another drive, fortunately, and uh, it was in two places, in other words, so I could print out the same certificate. And so I did. I printed it out, but I printed it out with the wrong call sign on it because he, had, he got a new call sign. I printed it out wrong. Uh, instead of uh, VA3 uh, PKW, I put PKF, and it was like, you know, I, I threw the W upside down, and I sent that to him, and it was like, he, he, and he loves to rasp me, he does, he loves to rasp me, so it was like, oh, shit. So I sent him a third one, which finally I got it right. Now, wait a minute, he's got a three, he's uh, in uh, Canada? He's in Canada. He's a he's a Canuckian. and because his name is Jim, uh, he used to go by the name. Of, you know, 
because there's so many gyms here. We all have our own, like, say, I'm Jimmy May and, and Possum, uh, KFADD is Possum Gym. Well, he went by Sled Dog Gym. You know, people say, oh, CB, CB. No, it's like there's so many gyms that were on here at the time. I think there were four or five. Uh, we all had uh, a way of distinguishing us if you said, hey, Jim. I got you. So, one night after I had had a few of these beer thingies, um, and we were talking about the Iraqi war, and uh, uh, bear with me, the, you know, the term sand nigger and stuff, you know, uh, and we were talking, and I said, well, what would we call Canadians? Nobody comes back, and I said, how about snow niggers? Oh, my God. <laughs> and Jim just basically jumped out my throat and started cracking up. And it's still funny today. You can call them frog. You can call them canuck. But don't ever, never, never call them a snogger. No, 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 no. Oh, well, it was funny then, and it's funny today. I, mean, I don't. It slipped out, and I never. You know, I don't. Well, I, I just I never, at that time I never. Well, I tried never to use the word nigger. I just it was like that's a not a good term to use. And it just slipped out, and I was like, oh shit! I can't believe I said that. And Jim has never let me live it down. Well, I tell you, sometimes uh, things can slip out that you really don't mean to say. I was on uh, two meters the other day, and. Uh, Early in the morning, and only on my uh, first cup of coffee, and I said, was talking about something, and I said, yeah, they were over there in Bum F. Egypt. <laughs> I said, what did I say? Dum Nakistan? Yeah, next to Cairo, I think it is. <laughs> but, I mean, things can slip out from time to time. I apologize. I, I really was shocked myself. Well, I did. I apologized to Jim a hundred times. But he found it uh, uh, humorous enough that he started going by the name Snoger. Okay, so that's that's uh, so that's Jim, the A three Z W up there in uh, up there in Snogerland. Man, I'll tell you, them guys up there got it made. I t was talking to this guy over in Calgary, and uh, I mean, he's just taking my doors off, and I. I said, what kind of power are you running over there? He said, oh, well, let I me mean, look. Oh, oh, about 2,000 watts. They're allowed to run more power than we can. Man, he was, he was burning my antenna up. You know why we're allowed to run more power than you guys? Because you treat it better. That's exactly right, Mr. KYV. Never, never turn an amp on in anger. Snogger. Yeah, unless you have business to take care of. Uh, Jim, uh, VKV, can you hear uh, uh, ZW up there? I think I can hear everybody, yeah. Hey, Jim? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, you know what you get when you cross a, a Canadian and a, uh, and a queer? <laughs> a snowblower. <laughs> I thought it would be a southeast mounted policeman. I'm waiting for Jim's return on that one. Uh, you know, that's just so stupid, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> hey, you know that uh, uh, there's uh, 56 letters in the Canadian alphabet? Uh-oh. Yeah, you, know, you got A-A, -A and B-A, and C-A. A? 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 Okay, Jim, you better jump in. Hey, Jim, you better step in now, Jim Stoger. What's the point? It's just stupid ignorancy. I know, but uh, you were going to tell me something earlier, and you got mad, and it wasn't my fault. I didn't get mad at all, see? Hey, I'm sorry. If I offended you, I'm really, truly sorry. I was just joking around. Listen, anybody that can run 2,000 watts legally has my, uh, in, in hats off. So now, I, that's what I was doing. I'm, I'm sorry. I was very, very poor on my, poor taste on my person. 
Messed up my uh, QSO vlog. <laughs> well, that could be like Zorsh. That, you could Zorsh that section right out of there and nobody will miss it. Maybe I'll just leave it in. What the hell? It's reality radio. You could you could do that. It is. It's reality radio. And it's like, okay, I don't, I don't have a problem. I like Jim. I do. I like Jim a lot. Wait a minute. Did you ask my permission to be recording me? Wait, did you ask my permission to like you? I don't care if you like me. I just want to know if my permission was asked to record me and then put me on the internet. Well, I mean, you're in a public place. Well, wait, wait. If we back up a little further, Jim, uh, it's not uh, Sled Dog Jim, uh, Jim Dawson. Uh, what we're going to find out is there's at least three other people recording us right here that all are from like the 3995 Nazi pedophile net. And one of them is the FCC, probably. Including them. Yeah. Thirty-nine ninety-five. Can I record too? Oh, uh, you know what? Join the crowd. You know, it, it's it's like recordings are like everybody's recording everything. I promise to delete it. Oh, that sounds like Pennsylvania with the uh, gun control bull crap with the. Uh, you know, when they first started, uh, you know, with all that stuff about, you know, oh, we'll throw it away after six weeks. And then it was found uh, five years later that they still had all the records. And then the federal, no, not the federal, but the uh, local judicial districts in Pennsylvania ordered the state that they had to throw out all those records on, on gun owners in Pennsylvania because they weren't following their own law. I remember you telling me all that. They really did that? Yeah, they did. They had to. Oh, I didn't know anything about that. This is this is about uh, four or five years ago. It's not recent. It's it's it's, it's you know way past. But uh, oh yeah, they got smacked hard. Uh, you know, it's like you you know your law says you're only going to hold these for a certain amount of time, and then they get thrown out. And you got you still got you still got records from how long ago? No. Go to the trash bins and burn them. Wow, very cool. I think the probably the FBI is burning a, a lot of records right now. And then they went to change the law so they could keep them off. Meanwhile, they're keeping everything electronic and storing it. That's where really it's being stored electronically. How many folks do you think are going to be going to jail here shortly? We're hoping to see uh, a, a major change occur in the next several months, and uh, with several. I'm not even going to try and define it. Let's just say that once we get out from under this stupidness of Russia and collusion and that BS, uh, I'm hoping that we start seeing some real justice in this country and some of the swamp creatures basically be drained, you know, pulled out, and I'm not saying drained, because the swamp not drained, but having these crocodiles, these, these crocodiles and alligators pour out of the swamp and basically sliced open. You know, it, it may get down to a military uh, investigation. Uh, you know, you don't know. It, it, FBI's uh, got problems. Uh, uh, DOJ's got problems. Uh, NSA is maybe uh, might be the cleanest uh, unit to work. We love the double on this frequency. <laughs> that, no, it's fine. It's like, that's what, you know, what that says to me is uh, there's a lot of interest and a lot of people that uh, want to say something and, and jump in, and I got no problem with that. It's, uh, it's free reign. The only thing I ask is I'm key after the first second or two that you talk and uh, see if somebody else is in there and decide whether you want to key down again. Hello? Yes? Oh, oh, I, I'm sorry, sir. Why? I don't know. I don't want to get beat up. Uh, what's 
hope nobody I hope nobody beats you up. Okay, okay. If somebody tries to beat you up, let me know. I'll take care of them. That guy was on 3850 bothering uh, Walter. There are a bunch of turds down there. Anyway, you ever listen to them now? Oh, my God. Yeah, I know where 13313 and 14313 ended up. Uh, it wasn't me. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. Is somebody, is somebody was saying that this is going to be the 14313 of 75? I would never do something like that. I don't think I don't think we're gonna go there. Oh, you should have heard it. <clears throat> uh, it was terrible. K nine R S Y and all of them guys from three one three ended up on seventy two hundred, and now they've moved from seventy two hundred down to thirty eight fifty. Oh, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. They are moved to thirty nine ninety five. Is where they ought to move. And see what Nazi pedophiles are like. Oh my God! Hey, did you guys oh, hear about to them? Uh, uh, it was horrible. High school out in Utah. Huh? Oh, tell you what, you talk about racist and stuff. I, I, I have met some of the finest people in my life, and they're not just all uh, Anglo or you know, Picts or Celts or whatever. Uh, they're they're all races. Some of the finest people. And it's like, stop it with this, uh, you know, dividing stuff. What was that about, uh, Utah? Yeah. <laughs> the students out in uh, Utah High School replaced the American flag with an ISIS flag. And they put uh, ISIS graffiti on the wall and a warning of a potential attack. I think uh, we need to cut off all uh, f uh, federal uh, monies going to that facility. Well, well wait, wait. There's uh, kids doing this. There's uh, kids doing this. Yeah, they took down the American flag at the school and put an ISIS flag up. But they got a they got a principal that's supposed to be uh, guiding them. Obviously, they're out of control. Uh, well, they put the American flag upside down or something underneath it. Well, we got a we have a principal there that. Uh, is scared to do anything because he doesn't understand the principles by which this country is guided because we've lived under eight years of Obama. Put them in a military school. Why don't we put the military in there and take them all out and... Well, and never mind. Where police say someone removed the American flag from the high school flagpole and replaced it with an ISIS flag. Them folks should try living under ISIS. Now, I was in the I was in the Corps for a number of years, and I've been to some a few communist countries. Let me tell you what: people in this country got it pretty goddamn good, and they don't realize it. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing, man. It, you know, and only because people have died to supporting the country and and uh, keeping the country the way it is uh, gives them the freedom to say what they to say. Well, I'm all in favor of, you know, the First Amendment, and I, I think people that uh, that support and defend that understand that everybody has a right to speak their mind, okay, uh, Alex. whether other people protested or not. They're still entitled. Alex, um, and, and the only way we can defend that is to make sure they do have that right. Uh, but but there is a few things that I don't agree with. If you live in the United States, I don't care what what you do or what you say. You do not burn the American flag, period. That's the one thing I'm totally against. I don't believe it's free speech. Okay, Alex? Yeah. All right. I, I do classify that as free speech. Do I like it? No, I abhor it. I do. I abhor it. But I do classify it as free speech. And I don't look upon individuals that do that as being uh, some people that I would respect. I would not respect them. But I, uh, but I do look upon it as free speech. Uh what I'm really finding problematic is that the kids today, and this is something you just, you know, you just, you alluded to it, others have alluded to it just uh, a moment ago, is that uh, because things are so safe in this country right now, no one feels any insecurity in uh, putting up, say, an ISIS flag, which is the enemy's flag. Uh, they are, they're an enemy. We've essentially, if not formally, we have... We have, uh, informally at least, declared war with ISIS. 
I have not seen a formal declaration of war, but I have seen an informal one. And, uh, you know, you got kids doing this. And why? Because kids got to do stupid stuff and be different. I guess where it becomes very problematic is we got a principal at a high school that doesn't know any better than to tell, you know, tell the janitor or whoever the hell who puts the flag up in the morning, pull that damn flag down and put the American flag up and make sure the kids don't get to it. Well, I've, uh, I've buried a number of my friends underneath that flag. And I folded the flag on three occasions at funerals. And, and I, I consider the flag a real important part of our country's history and our country's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's an anal- acknowledgement of the existence of our country based on the lives that have died. And when you burn that flag, you insult everybody that has died serving under it. So I take great offense that I see somebody burning a flag. Roger, Roger. They may have the uh, the wherewithal to uh, you know run that ISIS flag, but at the same time, we don't uh, have to uh, support that. I mean, they can do what they want, but we, you know, instead of having to pay for them doing that, we just should we, you know, bring our money back and just let them, you know, do what they need to do. Well, Jim, you remember back in the '60s. You sound like you're about my age. Uh, Back in the 60s, this country, our country, was giving all these loans to all these other countries, millions and millions of dollars. My question is, when do those loans become due and payable? They weren't loans. They were they were given to them. No, no, there were loans. Alex, Alex is right. There were a number that were given or, or basically put out as loans. In fact, if you take a look at most, not all, but most of the... Uh, most of the monies that are thrown out uh, to other nations are given out initially as loans and they're forgiven the very next year and then additional loans are given. Yes, I mean, anybody with any reasonable expectations of thinking that, uh, you know, these, those countries that got our money is going to give it back, you know, <laughs> I got a bridge for them. Well, you know, uh, I will give uh, uh, Trump credit. Uh, saying, you know, we're not going to defend these countries that refuse to pay in to NATO. Uh, I agree with that. Why should we be protecting people that don't support our organization and, you know, the NATO uh, pact by not contributing to it? I mean, you know, it's tit for tat. Okay, but let's look at it from a different perspective, okay? And I'm not trying to be anti-American. If America basically says, we'll, you know, we'll support NATO regardless, of whether you're going to pay into it or not, why as a nation would I want to pay into it? Yeah, well, as soon as we started paying, what, uh, 80% of NATO, then everybody else said, hey, that's great. Yeah, so, I, you know, I'm not, try, I'm not trying to, like, uh, you know, make these nations correct in what they're doing. I'm just saying that uh, if, uh, you know, you're, if you're going out, okay, and somebody says they're going to put the bill for the night, are you going to pay? What do we even need NATO for anymore? Well, okay, that, that, that's debatable, Rick. That's debatable. And uh, why do we need NATO? Uh, there's a strong possibility we may not need NATO. But by the same token, there's just as strong a probability that it may be needed. Because do we know Russia? How well do we know Russia? Okay, the answer to that question really comes down to how well do we know Russia? So it isn't just Russia, how well China, do we know the US, North Korea, uh, Syria, uh, Iran, a lot of these Middle East countries. Uh, NATO is, is, a required, is a requirement that should be maintained because the nations that can't defend themselves, who we trade with and do business with, and, and who have a, a, you know, a fairly marketable the rules in the government that they live by, even if it is socialist or communist or whatever, uh, but but they do abide a certain way. And, you know, I, I see why they support NATO and they belong to NATO, because if they didn't, the communists and everybody else would, would rule the world. I mean, you could just stop and think about this for a minute. Yeah, I remember, you know I told you about me being in Beirut. You know, that, that was years ago. 
And that was really the first terror attack on the United States. It's just that nobody in this country acknowledges it. It didn't happen on American soil, so they don't consider it a terrorist attack. Um, but, you know, you take some of these other incidents as a prime example. Look at Kuwait. You know, Kuwait's a wealthy country, but it has no military. And, you know, Saddam Hussein just rolled right across the border and said, you know, we're taking this over according to uh, uh, the old map. And what would, what would happen to the price of gasoline in this country if we didn't do anything about it? Well, there's a lot more to that story that has, than has been told uh, publicly, uh, you know, uh, Alex. There really is. No, I'm not But I'm just saying, basically, you know, what Saddam did was wrong. Saddam didn't do things right. Okay, I, I will say that. He did not do things right. But I'm not going to go so far as to say he did things wrong. And the reason, I, the reason I'm going there is because Saddam was actually given a green light by our State Department, believe it or not, a green light by our State Department that he could roll into Kuwait and we'd look the other way. That was because we had a young lady that didn't know what she was doing in the diplomatic corps uh, that uh, was negotiating with uh, Saddam. But anyway, what I think we need to do is, uh, I think we need to uh, kind of uh, nuke uh, North Korea and set it up where uh, it'll look like uh, China did it. Well, here's what I agree with that. Know. What gives the U.S. the right to step in on Kuwait? No, we, we didn't have, okay, the whole thing with Kuwait. If you take a look at the history of things, uh, basically there's a, an oil field called the Ramali oil field. Ten percent of that oil field, as they've you know basically seismically determined, is in Kuwait. Ninety percent of it is in Iraq. That oil field, okay, is, is major. It's it's one of the major oil fields in the in the world. Now Kuwait is pumping ninety percent of the oil out of that field. And it's going into the tankers. Why? Because the uh, the port is in Kuwait, and Kuwait basically controls the pipeline. But they're allowing nine, yeah, ten percent of uh, of the uh, oil fields uh, oil to be pumped from Iraq. In in international law, ninety percent of the oil pulled from that oil field belongs to Iraq. For eleven years, Iraq has been petitioning had had been petitioning the UN for redress under that situation. And everybody was like, you know, let's let's debate it, let's talk about it. And here we had uh, our Secretary of State basically, uh, you know, come back in and say, uh, we will allow a, uh, an ingression. We will allow an ingression of the uh, Iraqis into Kuwait in order to correct the situation. And as soon as that happened, we declared war, essentially, under uh, under uh, Hiram Walker Bush. Uh, so, essentially, we set them up. I, I, I just I have a, I have a problem with the whole situation. W three JMD. KC9VKB. I think uh, you know. It's, I think it's been proven that it was the uh, that uh, girl that was with the State Department gave Saddam the wrong uh, message, and he thought that everything would be cool if he went in there. I mean, I don't think that he would have gone in there if he would, uh, you know, have gotten the proper message, you know. I seriously doubt he would have gone in there had he gotten the proper message, but the message he got was, uh, we'll look the other way. That was the message he was he received, we'll look the other way. But who are you to give the message? That's my point. Who does the U.S. think they are to give the message to the rest of the world? That's what he was looking for. Saddam was looking for our what our feeling about it was, you know, that's, and he took, he uh, misconstrued. For the years, the U.S. government is just a big, bad bully, always has been and always will be. Uh, Jim, I'm not going to disagree with you with what you're saying in this respect, okay, because uh, this was a setup. This was an absolute setup, uh, and the reason was Saddam Hussein, had the largest standing army in the Mideast. In fact, he had the largest standing army in a lot of quarters. Uh, he had a damn big army, and Israel was worried. So what, would it, what occurred 
with that whole situation was a setup in order to basically decimate. Oh, shit, they more than decimated. They took out three quarters. Yeah, decimation means we take out 10% of your people. Okay, we take out, you know, one in ten. That's decimation. We did a hell of a lot more than that. We took out three quarters of their army. Yeah, 90% of their tanks. You know, the death march back, you know, you guys can go back, you can walk back to Baghdad, 210 miles through the desert, but don't take anything with you. Come on. Man, I would have loved to have the uh, scrap iron concession on that deal. Well, the problem is now, the scrap iron, the problem with that scrap iron is we were pumping all that depleted uranium into it. Jim, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying uh, up there, ba 3 zw I'm not disagreeing at all. What occurred in that situation was, was criminal. Oh, and I agree. <clears throat> but I, I, I have a... I have a real problem in the back of my head knowing that being a Canadian and as peace-loving as we are, I mean, we have our faults and we have our, uh, our skeletons in the closet just like, a, just like any country, but I, 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 you know, the annihilation of Canada and the explosion of Canada is going to be at the fault of the U.S. government. Somebody's going to attack you guys for something that you've done or a flight that you've done, and we're going to die too because, just because. It's called Operation Red Code. You have to understand, if I got it. Okay. You have to understand that years ago, the United States is not the United States it used to be. The United States is a business. It's a giant corporation, even though they say it's a government. It's not a government. It's a giant company. And companies do business to make money. And if they're not making money, they're losing money. And right now we're losing money. The only time this country has ever made money is when we've been at war. War is very profitable for corporations. And, you know, it, it, it's sad that that's the way we have to live. That's not the way our forefathers intended it. KZ9 DKV, you're going to cut out of here, Ben. Uh, you guys uh, take it easy. Have a good night. Uh, three is out of way, and uh, we'll uh, join you at a later, uh, Gator. You take care, Jim. 7 3. Uh, yeah, uh, all the best. W3 JMD. Good night, Jim. God bless. KV4PW. Hope I didn't say anything to upset you. Never. 7 3, KV3 GOS. KC9, DKV, clear.